We always talk about quick racket action to Bampton. In this video, we're going to give you three exercises for you to practice your racket action. Exercise one, grip exchanges. It's really about being able to change between the forehand grip and the backhand grip. And that's what we want to focus on in this exercise. The purpose of this exercise is having one as the feeder at the net, one being slightly defensive, focusing on the grip exchanges, forehand and backhand, forehand and backhand. So the exercise is a one versus one exercise, one standing at the net, being the feeder and the one doing the exercise. If we focus on the feeder as the beginning, that person should just stay at the net, be ready with their racket, having their racket high. And basically their job is to play it to the forehand, to the backhand, to the forehand, to the backhand. So the one doing the exercise are able to practice these grip exchanges. A key bullet for the feeder, as always, stay active in both your racket and your feet. Don't stand still, always be able to, to give your, your partner the best practice as possible. So mentally, you have to be there as well. So the one doing the exercise, the first thing to focus on is the footwork. Don't stand still, always be on your feet, be able to move depending on where the shuttle comes. Even though you know it's coming to your forehand, to the backhand, you still need to move so you get in the best possible position. As you can see in this video clip, I'm super active in my footwork and I think that's a really, really key in badminton overall, but also for this exercise, so you able to move from your forehand to your backhand, from your forehand to your backhand. So focus on the footwork as the beginning, stay on your feet and always be able to anticipate where the shuttle is coming. So if we talk about the grip, the forehand grip is a very basic forehand grip. So some would call it the hammer grip, but it's the basic forehand grip. Having your racket in your fingers and, and not being super tight in your grip because that's where you're not able to do the fast grip exchanges. So the racket must be loose in your hand. The same goes for your backhand where you just put the thumb here, getting the backhand grip so you're able to use the thumb to generate the power. So if you're super relaxed, you can have your forehand grip and basically you just need to move your thumb slightly, getting to the backhand grip, putting it down again to your forehand grip, backhand grip, forehand grip, backhand grip. The better you get, the faster you're able to do this, of course. So if you're not at a super high level, start slow and then work your way upwards. You will get there, I promise, you just need to practice. So where you hit the shuttle, both in your forehand and in your backhand is, I would say, almost with a stretch arm, right before you're stretching out, that's where you generate the most power. The best image I can give you is my former coach, she always told me, a boxer, they don't get full power when they box in here. It's almost when they reach their maximum length, that's where they generate the most power. It's the same with this shot. If we get it too close to the body, as we can see in the video, we can generate the power. We are kind of caught in our own body. So get your racket ready in front of you and reach it as early as possible, almost with a stretch arm. Not, not with a stretch arm, right before. That's where you generate the power. Another pitfall in this exercise is if I'm doing the exercise, because I know it's coming on my forehand and then my backhand, then my forehand, I get ready too early. That's not the purpose because then we don't practice our grip exchanges. We need to get our racket in front of us and then do the quick grip exchanges. So as you can see in this clip, if I get ready too early, I totally lose the purpose and then we're just wasting our time. So you really, really need to stay focused on not preparing, even though you know the shuttle is coming to one side, having your racket in front of you and then do the grip exchanges at the last minute. So we're able to do it as much as a match as possible. Exercise two, the cross drives. So in this exercise, we're gonna focus on if we're two right handers doing cross drives, so it's backhand to backhand or the other side, forehand to forehand cross drives. So if we start focusing on the backhand to backhand cross drives, we know the, the shuttle is coming to a backhand, so we can prepare ourselves with the backhand grip. As mentioned before, it is putting the thumb here on the racket, so we're able to generate that last power with the thumb. Movement in all exercises, but also this one, is of course staying on your feet. If we're staying too grounded, I would say, then we're not in position to the shuttle. We can never play the exact same shot every time. We, we need to move a bit and adjust depending on where the shuttle is coming from, from our feeder. The exercise is, is pretty basic. Basically, we're just standing here from backhand to backhand doing those cross drives, 
both practicing those cross drives, getting that precision, making it as close to the net as we are able to. As with all exercises here, we, we can't get the shuttle too close to our body. Again, we can't generate the power in here. So we need to reach the shuttle either a bit to the side or a bit in front of us and, and poking the shuttle cross court. I would recommend try to do a small movement as possible. If we have big movements here, then we're a bit too slow in our racket action. And remember, what we want to practice here is the quick racket action. So the exercise is the same when we move to the, the forehand. So instead, we of course have the forehand grip and then we both do cross drives. Remember again, ready on your feet and then have a loose grip so you're able to generate the power. Don't do big moves. It's easy to do, especially in the forehand, but that's not the purpose here. We want to do the quick racket action. So that it's really the movement as we see here that I'm doing. As you can see in this clip, if we are standing too still, in our forehand side, it also accounts on our backhand side. We're basically ruining the purpose here. So always stay active on your feet. I can't highlight this enough. Exercise free, it's basically fret drives, random, no rules. We want to put a bit pressure on our, on our grip exchanges. So I would recommend both to approximately stand a meter from the service line. So we are a bit close to the net, both of us, but that really stresses us to, to be able to, to be ready on both our feet, but especially our uh, racket actions. So loose grip is important here. So as mentioned, it's random. You basically need to have a very loose grip. So once the shuttle comes, you're able to switch between the forehand or the backhand. Nothing is super black and white in badminton. We all know that. So sometimes you, you maybe take the shuttle with your forehand grip on, on the backhand side. That's totally okay. Or you take the shuttle with your backhand grip on the forehand side. All okay. It's just very important that you keep the short and quick racket actions. So recapping here, we have three exercises. The first one was being able to change between the forehand and the backhand grip, where you know where the shuttle is coming. Exercise two is also backhand to backhand, forehand to forehand, given of course we both are right-hander. And the last one is random flat drives. That's three exercises that you are able to use and practice your racket actions, your grip and improve that. If you like this video, please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Remember to turn on the notifications so next time we post new videos that you will get notified. Hopefully we'll see you again in our next video.